This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Pia, Stratford Town Council Chair. Uh, today is August 10th, 2020 at 6.47 p.m. I'd like to call the regularly scheduled Town Council of Stratford public, uh, public hearing to order, public forum to order. Um, I don't believe we have anybody as, on the call that is willing that is offering to speak uh, just to double check is there anybody who would like to speak tonight okay i don't see anyone margo for, for the record um with that being that there are no no speakers i'm going to call the public hearing closed and we'll reconvene at 8 p.m sharp for the uh, town council meeting on this same line thank you all thank you this conference will now be recorded everybody um, thank you for joining me, uh, joining us. Uh, today is August 10, 2020. It is 8.02 p.m. My name is Chris Pia, Stratford Town Council Chairman. Uh, we're going to begin the regularly scheduled uh, council meeting uh, with the invocation and pledge. And Councilwoman Shake, if you can guide us in that, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, let us please take a moment to recognize the resilience of our residents and business owners as they persevere through not only the effects of the recent storm damage, but also the effects of COVID-19. And to all the essential workers who serve on the front line in service to our community and our state, let us share our gratitude for their sacrifice and wish them continued health, well-being, and safety. And now let us do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation yeah. under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, uh, Councilman Shank. Appreciate that. Um, first item on the agenda. Uh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Severus. Paul, Paul Severus. Uh, if, if I may, I would just like to take a few seconds to uh, recognize uh, Congressman John Lewis, uh, who just passed recently, and uh, C.T. Vivian. These uh, gentlemen were stalwarts in the civil rights movement and of voting rights. And uh, I certainly feel their spirit. I certainly feel that they would be very proud of us that maybe not serving on the scale that they serve, but no less uh insignificant that what we do and uh on behalf of all of you and uh, i'd just like to say just that we recognize uh congressman lewis for his life service it just well, just a second just to... and we'll take a moment of sound thank you mr Tavares. we'll take a moment of sound thank you sir thank you mr chairman thank you all um, first item on the agenda for everybody. Number one, approval of the minutes. I'll entertain a motion for a couple of those items under that item, excuse me. This is Laura Dancho, motion to approve the minutes. Dancho. Do I have a second? Uh, second by Mr. Seconded by Mr. Perlow, I see a hand there. Uh, and we'll just do an all in favor vote. Uh, please Can I, make a, I, I would like to make a motion to amend the minutes of July 13th before we take a vote. And what would the motion, uh, which item in particular, Ms. Dancho? Um, I would like to make a motion to um, amend, to correct the date on the minutes of July 13th from June 8th in the first line, the date's incorrect. From the July 13th meeting minutes. Yeah, it says June 8th on the first line and it should say July 13th. Gotcha. So a uh, simple typo. Thank yeah. you, Joe. Um, do I have a second to the amended? Um, seconded by Mr. Harden, I saw. Um, any discussion on the amendment? Again, a simple typo, I'm, I'm looking at it. Any discussion on the amendment by Ms. Dancho? No, okay, so we'll vote on the amendment, please. Uh, so all in, it'll be a simple, uh, simple voice vote. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Okay, motion passes 10-0. I believe we have everybody on the call, correct, Margo? Yes, I, to my to my count, I believe we have everybody. Yeah. Okay. 
motion uh, amended and passes 10 0. So back to the original as amended of approval of the minutes. Um, if you do that motion as amended. We didn't hear you, Mr. Chairman. Um, wait, yeah. Sorry. Ms. Nanto, if you'd like to make the motion as amended. Yes, I'd like to um, approve the minutes as amended. Gotcha. And a second to that, please. I'll second that. Mr. Perillo, gotcha. Uh, all of those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 You're past nine. Any opposed? Motion passes 10 0. Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Nanto, for picking up on that. Um, no, nothing under item two. Under item three, communications, bills, petitions, or remonstrances. Uh, item 3.1, monthly TANS report. I'm going to ask Dawn to uh, give us the report of how we've done over the last 30 days. Aye. Dawn? Yep. Sorry. Okay. Und undoing thing. Okay. Um, I just had that in my hand here. So the tax collections uh, in terms of cash have been on target. Uh, so we are comparatively last year, we were at about 50% of, of the total budget. And this year we're at 52% of collection rate of the total 100% budget. So we're tracking uh, almost the same as last year, a little better than last year. And in terms of the cash flow, um, I'm sorry I didn't get that report out. I can send it to anybody who wants it. Somebody was out last week, so I just didn't have an updated one to send. But we are, you know, right now we're we do not need to do any borrowing for tax anticipation notes. We're we're um, in good shape right now. So, Dawn, being that this is our kind of our first real look at 30 days uh, of this, the bottom line is you said we're a couple percentage points above our person this time last year. Is that correct? Yeah. So, right now we're at. So, um, what I basically did was I took our entire tax revenue budget, including everything, delinquencies and whatever was in the budget. And last year at this time, you know, we have. Our taxes are pretty much, you know, twice a year. We have the July and we have the January due payments. We usually get a little more in July. So last year at this time, cash that was brought in for all purposes, all late payments, everything, was at, as of um, 8 7, was at 50.37% of. Uh, all tax revenue that was budgeted. And this year we're at 52.36%. So we are tracking a little, you know, about 2% more than last year. So we're on target. Um, you know, we, we don't have, uh, I don't know the breakout of what's current and what's delinquent taxes at this time. We won't know that for another couple of weeks when we reconcile it, but it's looking much better than we anticipated. Yeah, and if you could, I know you, I know you mentioned you weren't able to get it out, but if you can get that to the council tomorrow. Yeah, I, I will. Yes, okay. I did. Um, I sent it to Margo, and um, and um, Margo, can you email that to everybody tomorrow? Yeah, we'll make sure. Okay. Any questions for Dawn uh, on this month? Uh, Chris, it's Greg Can. Go ahead, Greg. Um, when did we anticipate, Don, that we could retire that short-term bond? So I'm having a conversation with um, our bond advisor, hopefully this week, and I'll have an answer then. What we normally do is we will start the process of of um, uh, putting together the official statement uh, dealing with the rating agencies and uh, with the help of the advisor and our bond council will be sizing the bond 
and that basically means you know what what we anticipate we'll need for the year what we have to pay back in our short-term borrowing uh you know we usually borrow about a year's worth of short term and what we've spent over the past year and we'll size the bond and um and then we'll you know we'll have uh an answer for that so i don't have the answer for that right now but normally we do that in september we start the Thank process you. now in august and we complete it in september good greg okay yes good excellent um any other questions for dawn on the monthly tans report okay dawn thank you very much um we You're appreciate welcome. it we'll uh we'll, you'll keep us informed going forward um next item on the agenda item 3.2 so i was very excited i was very excited about this i know um as well as a couple others were mr fletcher mr jeffrey Fr jeffrey fletcher um unfortunately had a last minute um scheduling conflict he emailed myself this morning at about 10 o'clock um he was going to present something that he's been uh working on and very passionate about uh, about uh the idea of an african-american museum um to present at the council to bring everybody up to speed um i don't want to steal his thunder as this gentleman is incredibly passionate and i respect everything about it um so without that i know i was really excited to hear it um he is going to make he's already he communicated with us uh he would like to month agenda which we will do uh so i just wanted to at least explain that to everybody he did email us this morning about with a last minute uh emergency i'm going to hold off on that right now all right. Um, so, uh, Margo and Quiller 16, I'm getting a lot of feedback on. Thank you. All right. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Mayor Hoytick. For Mayor, on, Mayor, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you again. Tropical wow. storm is as it says uh, update approximately 13,500 customers in Stratford lost power during the tropical storm on Tuesday, August 4th. I'd like to commend Larry Ciccarelli, Public Safety Director, PW Director Mo McCarthy, Mike Downs, Chief of Staff, Chief Brian Lampart, Joe McNeil, Dispatch Superintendent JP Straczynski, and Director Mike Louise EMS for all of their and their department's excellent service to Stratford during the storm and the following recovery. Dispatch received an expedited 765 calls for service in one on, on the fourth, which was an unbelievable number of calls that they managed effectively. Fire responded to 128 calls on Tuesday, and EMS responded over the course of the three day storm period to 88 calls. Public Works has worked 24 seven on Tuesday, keeping the roads clear, moving storm debris and working with the utility companies to make safe passage and restore power. Public Works continues to work and to remove storm debris. They work till about eight o'clock tonight and we will have many days of work ahead of us to come. I can't tell you how proud I was. I can't tell you, I can't tell you how proud I was of our departments, how well they work together, um, and how they put the safety of Stratford's residents first. We should all be very, very appreciative of their expertise um, and and just their ability. As as we've seen through this whole COVID pandemic, you know, with Andrea leading the charge from the health department to uh, Brian, who is really the enforcer for Brian, Joe, and Andrea, who are the enforcement officers for the town for COVID. Um, it's pretty outstanding how well they work together and what efforts they have fostered and the outcomes that we've received. So I just um, want to publicly thank them for all their service. We had a server upgrade. Um, as you know, I reported last month that flagship, our IT provider, was in the final stages of installing the servers, which went beautifully. And now we are experiencing faster operations, which instead of the almost dial up sequence that we used to have experience, we are now actually moving in the 21st century. And I'm happy to tell you counselors that your patience has been, will be rewarded shortly because now everything is ready for the um, email ex conversion to exchange online email. So I know you've been really patient and 
have not gotten the communication as much as she as well as we would have hoped from your town email addresses but you will shortly we should be ready to cut over to this on thursday so they're doing some testing tomorrow and wednesday and thursday god willing i hope i receive immediate emails from you guys that um, tell, tell me things are working. Um, our PPE and COVID update is, we, to date we have 100, 906 cases and 79 deaths. Um, the public safety director, school safety director, signed MOU was sent to the Board of Education and I'm waiting for the fully executed document to be returned. Regarding town and school collaborations, the town continues to work with the Sharpa Public School Administration to be ready the buildings for the opening of school on September 9th. We were advised that the A-B hybrid attendance model has been selected by the superintendent. So I'll explain it very briefly to you. So that's group A will attend school on Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, there will be no one in attendance in the schools except for the janitorial staff for cleaning. And uh, group B will attend schools on Thursday and Friday. Uh, middle school teacher Chris Newland, uh, he is a uh, science teacher at Worcester Middle School, is one of the two Connecticut teachers to win the Presidential Award for Excellence in Math and Science Teaching. Our infrastructure projects are going along very well. If you've been by Sikorsky Airport and the Mayor Parkway on Route 110, it's beautifully done. Kudos to John Casey and also Mary uh, Dean for advocating for this project as long as they have. Exit 32 and 33 are on, moving along, and Route 113, which is Main Street, as you can see through the obstacle course of the man, raised manhole covers that we are proceeding. And hopefully, um, as I went by Main Street after I left Town Hall tonight, it was about 7 o'clock, some of it was very flush. So they should be finishing that paving and then lining the street, which is great. Um, also, regarding uh, the schools, I signed a letter of intent uh, for the Benel baseball field in light of our intent to install field lights on and that were approved by the Planning Commission um, and as these lights would be incorporated into the project at some point in time I signed the letter of intent because if we had waited until after the turf was I signed a letter of intent let me explain this to include the lights into the project because if we had waited until after the turf was placed it would have cost us an additional $100,000. So under my purview of mayor, I do have the right to allocate um, the low SIP funds, which are as a grant allocated from the state. So I chose to use those funds to do this part of the project. It's in CIP for next year. We can allocate that for something else. Um, but in light of it saving $100,000, I want to advise you that I had done that. And then we can discuss it more because you have an item on the agenda to approve the contract for the vanilla baseball field. Um, the concerts on the green uh, started last month. They went really, really well. August 11th is the re-entry band. The 18th is the void. August 21st is the band, and I believe that's Bobby Burrow's band. And um, 25th is the cold ones, and September 1st, Chauncey Street Blues Band. As you know, Town Hall has been open for tax at walk-in service for tax collection and the tax assessor. Um, the town hall entrance by those offices are open, but there, there's a concierge who greets you and directs you to where you, you should go. Face masks are required when entering the building. All the other departments are by appointment and the res residents have been encouraged to use the online services. And I'd I'm pleased to report that most residents are doing that and it seems to be working out very well. Our public meeting status, as you know, the chairs at the chair's discretion, the meetings are either online or in person. Some chairs have been very um, open-minded. They've had open air meetings. I know the Arts Commission has met at uh, Shakespeare Theater, uh, Shakespeare property. So that was uh, kind of cool. And then we've asked that no one put themselves at risk. And uh, there's only one night, um, one meeting allowed in council chambers at night. The Stratford Point Keeper's House is scheduled for painting next week. We had a ribbon cutting at uh, Jared's Dog Park on Saturday. It's a beautiful facility. I encourage you to go to Roosevelt Forest to see it. And I am reappointing two commissioners, Shannon Hoven to the Architectural Review Board and Daniel Hoey to the Longwood Park Commission. 
And that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, let me, before I open up to questions for the mayor, I'll, I'll ask my, I will open to the mayor and ask mine and just first start off with, with a couple of things. First off, to, your, to echo what you said about your departments, um, I can't tell you what an amazing job these guys, these men and women have done the last five days. I mean, just this simple, I went out to thank my garbage men this morning, just say guys, because you could see it and they're just utterly exhausted. And just a simple thank you is a really great thing for fire EMS, yeah, everybody. Uh, public work so thank you again and please please thank them all for us um the other thing is i did was go uh friday evening and uh accept the award uh by the briquettes uh so uh bob baird and the strapper briquettes um gave us a, a nice little thank you to, to mayor hoydick and and the council uh, for all the great improvements that deluca has gotten uh over the last year the place the field looks amazing and the young ladies who are playing in the tournament uh i believe that I believe it was the 12th or 14th annual uh, Break Hits uh, National Women's Tournament. We're very much appreciative. So um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for that. Um, any questions for the mayor with that? Uh, no. I, I have uh, Councilwoman Shake first. I saw her, her hand. So I'll go with Caitlin. Go ahead. Um, yes, everyone, you know, in DPW and our parks and public safety, um, the amount of you know, influx of calls and just neighbors, um, thankful for the cooperation of everyone in the town. And then just, I think the neighborly gestures that people made was um, very encouraging. So I'm sure this unfortunately isn't the only storm that we're going to have over the next few months. So um, my feedback is that, you know, I hope that we're as best prepared as possible. Um, and I'm, very thankful for the active communication coming from the mayor's office um, to residents. I know that that was shared widely and people greatly appreciated that because that was the only um, you know platform, whether it's mostly on social media, that people were able to stay updated um, and then get it from their neighbors as well. So thank you for that. Um, mayor Hoydick, my question is to you regarding the Long Brook Park Commission. I had sent an email inquiring Amy Wilkes's possible vacancy um, because I never received any form of, you know, official communication since January, since I was sworn in in December that there was a vacancy. Um, and the last that we had heard from Amy was that she thought that she was still going to be sitting because her term was not up, even though she had moved out of the district. So if you could just explain that. So are the requirements for the commission to be a member of the second district? When I inquired, I was told uh, that the answer was no. Yeah, so that's probably why she, she wouldn't have to resign because she's as a, citizen of Stratford, she could still participate on the commission. Correct. So I didn't receive any official notice that she had resigned, which I'm assuming is the seat that is vacant that Mr. Hoey is filling. Is that correct? I thought Dan Hoey was on the commission. Yeah. Well, then I'm going to have to ask Mike Downs to check into this. Okay. We'll get, um, you and the rest of the commission, because I, I did email uh, Mike and I spoke to Margo, and at one point I did speak to the town clerk also over the last couple of weeks. So I, we could talk about this offline, but he, no, it's, 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 it's okay to talk about it now, Caitlin. I mean, if oh, no, um, if, if there's yeah. if there's no vacancy if there's no vacancy for appointment, then uh, Dan will have to wait for it until there's a vacancy. Okay, I just didn't know if there was possibly something that I was missing, so I just wanted clarification. But as far as as far as I am aware, um, you don't have any vacancies. I thought that you were replacing Amy, so that was. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yes. No, I, I do. Thank you for saying that. But um, I didn't receive a resignation from her, so um, I just thought because Dan was so active attending meetings before that he was on the commission. So that's. Uh, my my apologies no worries thank you thank you caitlin and we'll check into it for you 
Uh, Mr. Tavares, yes, sir. Thank you, uh, through the chair. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Uh, I also want to extend my kudos to uh, the expediency of your staff of public works. Um, uh, I'm sure all of us were stressed out with the phones ringing off the hook, um, but the, the way the guys work and the way they're still working, they're, they're working their tails off. And I certainly sent an email to uh, Mo McCarthy thanking him for a couple of residents that literally had trees on their homes. And uh, they came out there and I wish UI had as much expediency as as our guys did. Um, and I know that the, so I thank you for that. Thank your staff and Mike, and they answered all my calls. It, it really was, was good. It's just that what was heart wrenching for me was the calls of folks that didn't have power that uh, needed to have their medications refrigerated. Uh, I sent out a blast to everybody on uh, Facebook and, and Messenger that please look out for neighbors that the ones that did have power to do that. Um, and I know that the governor, I know that the, 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 the governor uh, sent out a um, request for a uh, investigation. Um, it's just that, you know, the next storm is coming and how do we deal with the trepidation of that? Um, do we inundate them with calls to see if they're ready? Is there, do you think there's gonna be a report with some kind of a plausible explanation as to what happened? Um, only because of the fact that when the next time comes, uh, how do we tell all of our constituents that uh, we've, we've got it together? I, I know that's not, a, and I'm not trying to corner you with the questions is that uh, as a freshman uh, council person, I don't want to just tell people, you know, make sure you have ice or uh, I just felt so inept in that part of it because of the fact that so many of us had power for so, uh, out of power for so long. And, and having lived through Irene and Sandy, you know, we all have experienced that loss of power and that fear. And I agree with you, uh, Paul, that um, especially for those people that are more isolated, those are the ones that I am very concerned with. And thank you so much for reaching out to your neighborhoods and asking them to look out for their neighbors because it's really, really important. And when people would email or call, that's exactly what I would say. Do you have a neighbor that has electricity? Can you put your diabetic insulin into their refrigerator? Um, but it's it's still not comforting. You're exactly right. So what we're doing as a region, um, the CEOs of the region, is we're pulling together um, the report for Pura and for the governor, as well as our comments to UI. Um, you may know or you may not know that I was the ranking member of Energy and Technology during Irene Sandy and crafted the storm response bill. So I know that bill language very well. I know the statute requirements and I know what the utility companies did not do. And I am furious. I'm furious because we have our crews out on the road trying to clear the roads and UI is supposed to be there with their crews to make safe. That means to cut the power so our crews can clean up after. We have police, we have fire, we have public works. In some cases, we had the health department, we had EMS out on the roads, and it was it's dangerous. And it's the utility company's responsibility to shut the power down so we can make safe those roads. So I hear you, I agree. As a former firefighter, I know you've experienced this. Um, the best thing that we can do is really work together, and I think we work stronger as a region on this, for all the coastal communities, Milford, Bridgeport, Fairfield, Trumbull, Stratford, we really got socked. Easton, Easton probably got hurt worse than all of us. But if we work together um, as a region, I think at least we will give the governor some really good talking points in the General Assembly so they can, I don't think it'll be sanctions on UI, but it'll make sure that we do things better the next time around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hoyt. Any other questions for the mayor? Uh, Chris, it's Greg Camp. Go ahead, Greg. Yep. Oh, thank you. Hello, Madam Mayor. Uh, at the last RDA meeting regarding Center School, they suggested a joint meeting with the town council, possibly the end of August, uh, you know, a special meeting to kind of put the heads together. Can we get an update on a timeline of moving forward with center school 
So the center school project um, meeting with RDA and the council is being scheduled with the council chairman. And Greg, I'll Greg, I'll jump in right there. I was council planning chairman means the schedule for the council. He's going through his head to schedule the, for the council. And Greg, thank you, Madam Mayor. And Greg, just to answer your question, last week was my intention of looking at that calendar and on Tuesday uh, with the mayor, and then the storm hit. So give me. It's, it's on my short list. It's not going away until we get it. And I do want to have that soon. Okay. Thank you. No problem. And counselor, there's no rush to do anything with center school at this point. The reason again, that I encourage the RDA to bring the proposal before you was just to take the pulse of how you felt about it. If we were going in the right direction, the wrong direction, um, the public input has been valuable for the last two years. We're, we we use it for a lot of different things, not just the center school project. So um, even though we might be frustrated that it's taken a little long, especially during COVID, I think the uh, communication has been valuable and I look forward to seeing uh, us work collaboratively on whatever we do, if anything, with the center school property. Absolutely. Collaboratively. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Any other questions for the mayor? Chris, this is Bill O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien, go ahead, sir. Well, Madam Mayor, I want to thank you for your leadership, for giving up the last days of your vacation to come back and deal with the uh, the nightmare, and uh, especially for your intervention to help 96-year-old World War II veteran Bob Morrissey, who needed a generator for power until Sunday. And I dealt with the frustration, too. I made number of calls to UI that one day just could not get through. Finally, the next day I got through very quickly and I still have a limb with uh, branches on, on the wires at my house, live wires. Luckily I did not lose power. And of course, Mr. Morrissey, they had live wires there until I think Sunday before the UI finally showed up to turn, turn off the power. So the electrician could come in and do his work that also needed to be done before the UI did their work. But, most of all, thanks for all you did, and let's, uh, I guess, work with the UI in the future to commu get better communication and a better way to contact them. Thank you, Councilor O'Brien. Any other questions from there? All right, seeing none, we're gonna move on. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Next item on the agenda, item 4.3.1, the Public Works Committee. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Poisson. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.3.1A um, and B. These both have to do with the uh, West Broad Street reconstruction. So if we could take them together. Okay, motion to approve item 4.3.1A and B. Uh, motion made by Mr. Poisson. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Hardin. I see, correct. Gotcha, David. Uh, any discussion Thank on you. this item? Yes. On these items, excuse yeah. me. Um, Chairman, it's Greg Can. Go ahead, Greg. Thank you. Um, the ex these expenditures, is this a state project or will we need town funds? Now, the funding's already in place for this, Mr. Casey stated at the meeting. Okay, Greg, it's in the, uh, the meeting notes, the meeting minutes from the Public Works that was in the pony. Okay, it's already been funded. Very good. Yep. Any other any other discussion on this item? A and B. Okay. Hearing none, we're going to call for a vote. Um, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 10-0. Uh, next yes, item, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Poisson. I'd like to make a motion to uh, waive the rules to add an item to the agenda that was inadvertently uh, left off. It was another referral from the Public Works Committee. Go ahead, Mr. Poisson. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to add. Sorry, finding it in my notes here. I believe it's under. On yes, it was sent, yes, it was sent to the town council with a favorable recommendation, the installation of a cast in place six foot by three foot reinforced 
concrete culvert section in an amount not to exceed $11,529.40. Again, this also has to do with the West Broad Street reconstruction that's been going on. Thank you, Mr. Poisson. So motion to waive the rules to add uh, the item Mr. Poisson just mentioned to the agenda as uh, as was supplied in the in the public works meeting minutes in the agenda, in the in the pony. Uh, do I have a second to that motion? I'll Bill O'Brien. Go ahead, Bill. I, can, I, can, I, I heard Mr. O'Brien first. Sorry for the second. All right. So any discussion on waiving the rules to add this? As I mentioned, it's um, I'm looking at array was in the pony. The third bullet point down on page two of the public works committee was sent with a favorable. So uh, with that, uh, mm -hmm. I will I will ask for a, a roll call vote. Excuse not a roll call. Excuse me, just a, a vote on this. Everyone in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 10-0. Uh, so now, uh, Town Attorney Leclerc, we go back to uh, the motion. Excuse me, the item as and now we vote on it on the agenda. Correct. That was just a wave. Yes, Mr. Chairman, once it's been added to the agenda now, uh, someone, uh, it's on your agenda, someone should move, second, discuss, vote, please. Mr. Yes, Poisson. Mr. I'd like to make a motion to move the uh, item that we just added to the agenda from Public Works. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Poisson. Do I have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Councilwoman Shake. Thank you, Caitlin. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Terrible time. Any opposed? Motion passes 10 0. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda 4.3.2, the Building Needs Committee. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 4.3.2A. Uh, it's a uh, Stratford High renovation. It's a Turner change order for the uh, soil removal. It's the last piece of soil that needs to be, last bunch of soil that needs to be uh, removed. Okay, motion by Mr. Poisson. Uh, do I have a second to that motion? I'll second. Second, Dave Harden. Seconded by Mr. Harden. Okay, any discussion on this, on this item? No, okay, hearing none, we'll call for a vote. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 9-0. Um, point. Uh, uh, a note, Ms. Piquette. Um, I just received uh, a, a note from Mr. David Wright that Jim Connor just jumped off at eight. Uh, his call jumped off at 8:36 p.m. So I believe this past vote should have been a 9-0, as well as this one. If we can make that correction and note that in the minutes, please. So it's accurate. The um, the the vote for the public works or just these building needs. The, the, at 836, we were voting on the public 3.1, the new added item. A and B, he okay. was on, but the new added item only okay. would be three. Yep. And this one would also be 9 0. Okay, got it. Thank you, Mr. Wright, for the for the for the attention. Okay, well, um, next item uh, that was item next item on the agenda, town attorney's report. Uh, Mr. Excuse Chairman, me. we still have one more from building needs. Item B, go ahead, Mr. Poisson. Sorry about that. No problem. I'd like to approve item 4.3.2 B. It's a Stratford High Turner change order. Uh, it's for the netting around the uh, new turf field that's going at the high school to keep balls from flying all over. Item 4.3.2 B, Stratford High Turner change order. Do I have a second to that? Second, Dave Harden. Discussion on this item? Mr. Chairman, we cannot hear. Someone's got an open mic with a lot of background noise. Thank you, sir. All right, so we're under discussion. Mr. Harden had seconded it. We're under discussion for item 4.3.2, item B. Any discussion on this item? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we'll call for a vote. Uh, everyone in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 9-0. Um, next item on the agenda, Mr. Uh, Town Attorney Hodge and Town Attorney's Report. We do have a lot of background noise when you come on, Chris, just an FYI. 
Yeah, I, thank you. I have no report this evening. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And he's back on mute. Excellent. Good. Um, next item on the agenda. Uh, item five, um, five point three point one. Uh, this yes, was a uh, Mr. Mr. Poisson. Go ahead, sir. I'd like to make a motion to take item five point three point one off the table. Laura Dancho, second. Okay, motion to take item five point three point one off the table. Ms. Dancho has a second. Any discussion on this? This just to bring everyone up to speed. This is something that we had tabled last month. There were, if you remember and refer back to your minutes, there were two items uh, for essentially pandemic costs uh, for Turner for the Sharp High School. The first item was costs they had incurred. We voted and approved that. The second item we tabled uh, pending further clarity, and we had asked Mr. Timniak to work with uh, Turner on this. So, Mr. Timniak, if you can just give us a brief update on this, sir. Mr. Chairman, I think you should vote to take it off the table and then it's on your agenda. Thank you, Mr. LeClaire. So we'll, we'll vote on it now to take it off the table and put it on the agenda. So all in favor of putting it on, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion. Uh, any opposed? Okay, then motion passes 9-0. Um, Mr. Poisson, if you'd like to motion to approve it. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 5.3.1. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Laura Dancho, I'll second. Thank you, Ms. Dancho. Second by Dave Sorry. She beat you, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> um, motion, sorry. motion made, uh, seconded by Ms. Dancho. It's discuss, under discussion. Mr. Timiak, if you could bring us up to speed, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. I reached out to uh, Paul Drummy of Crack immediately following our last town council meeting. I said the number of 160, uh, I know, you know, we discussed how they came to the 160. They took what the cost had cost up until that point, and they projected the next couple of months, and they came back with a 166 number based upon the projections. Well, the initial reaction of COVID and what they were doing to keep the project going, uh, they, uh, they basically sharpened their pencil. They looked at what they need to do to finish the job, and they came back with a $105,000 number um, now as a reminder this is just an allocation this isn't the exact uh, amount and they do want me to remind everybody that the door is open in case the number needs to come up uh, for future after nine they gave me a date after 918 so they would like to allocate have the count town council allocate a hundred and five thousand dollars um, versus the 160 they requested previously. Mr. Tim, That's my report. Question. So they're going to be giving us the next 30 days report in September, then, correct? Is that understanding now? Yes, that's what I'm I'm told. Any just any other questions for Mr. Timniak on this? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Poisson. Yes, uh, Chris T. Uh, I believe it was through September 14th, not the 18th, right? Because the 14th would be our next council meeting. Uh, the email I have from Paul says projected to 918, um, and that's in the column. In the actual email, he does state that the September 14th meeting is the town council meeting, so I hope I hope to get an updated number prior to that meeting so we can discuss it then. I would assume it would go through building needs again um, with any, any update they have, uh, but we're definitely monitoring it, and I appreciate, uh, I appreciate the work everybody's done in trying to, uh, you know, fine tune this number. Right, I think next month it would definitely should go through to Stratford High Subcommittee and then go to building needs and then come back to us. You're right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm comfortable with that, Mr. Timniak, as well. All right, Mr. Any Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to amend item 5.3.1 to the amount of $105,000. Motion to amend item 5.3.1 to $105,000 by Mr. Poisson. Do I have a second to that? Laura Dancho, I'll second. Seconded by Ms. Dancho. Any discussion on the amendment on the amendment of 105? I just okay. have a, a quick question. Um, Go ahead. What, what is the purpose of um, doing the allocation ahead of time? Why wouldn't they just do a change order as it occurs or an expense as it incurred? What would be the advantage to 
putting it aside, I'm assuming this is all coming out of contingency, correct? Mr. Timniak? Timniak. Or Mr. Yeah, when they do stuff as an allowance, uh, it's because they don't know exactly what's going to happen. If there was an uptick in COVID or it went down, they needed more cleaning, less cleaning. So when it's in as an allowance, it doesn't have to be exactly that number. It, it could actually be less. And a lot of times, a lot of Turner stuff, when we've given them an allowance, such as the summer spending to keep the project moving and everything, has come in under the number that they've projected. Right, they basically right. put a number in to keep the project moving. Okay. All right. I just wanted to be clarified on that. And I know that Turner's been great as far as um, staying within budget. So we're good. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Dancho. Any other discussion on the amendment? Okay. Hearing none, we're going to vote on the amendment to uh, to amend the item, changing it from 163.557 to 105,000. Uh, we'll call for a vote on this. Uh, everyone in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Okay, no opposed. Motion passes 9-0. Before we move back to voting on uh, the item as amended, Ms. Paquette and Mr. Wright, I'm sorry, I'm relying on you for the text. Mr. Connor, Mr. Connor is telling me he is on, but I believe he is one of the muted callers as he dropped off and called back in. What would be your recommendation on how we can identify him? Let me unmute the callers and uh, yeah, you can let us try to pull them out. Okay. I right, stand by. Jim, Jim Connor, can you identify yourself, please? You're unmuted. Jim? I'm I'm talking now. I've been here the whole yeah. time. I both. Can you yep. I have Dave Wright, 16. I have you, Jim. Okay. We lost. We lost his appearance on the screen, and I couldn't tell that he was still on. I apologize. Here we go. All right, stand with us, everybody. Stand by. Um, I have the counselors. Okay. Um, Jim Connor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. When did you when did you drop off? I know you said you were on and I apologize. I I was on the whole I was off for thirty seconds. My phone died and I signed back in. The mayor was still giving a report. So I voted on every single thing. I guess you I thought you guys could hear me. Okay. Mr. LeClaire, come through you LeClaire. Yes. Thank you. Town Attorney LeClaire, what would your recommendation be for Mr. Connor? He's saying he did vote on everything. And then I would take that representation. I would just ask Mr. Connor to confirm that he voted in the affirmative on everything, if that's the case. Mr. Connor, can you confirm that for Mr. Town Attorney? Yes, I, I voted affirmative on, on uh, every single motion. Okay. Ms. Paquette, you, Mr. Paquette, if you can make that note. Okay. Thank you all. And thank you. Tim. Sorry about that. Um, thank you all for your patience. Um, next item on the agenda. Excuse me. We're we're back to 5.3.1 as amended. So I'll need a motion to uh, make final approval of that motion as amended. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 5.3.1 as amended. Okay. Motion by Mr. Poisson. Do I have a second to that? Sorry, Dan. Show a second. Ms. Dancho, thank you. Any discussion on, on this as a final approval? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll call for a vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 10-0. Thank you all. Um, next item on the agenda, 7.1, an awarding of a contract for athletic field renovations for Benel High School Field. Mr. Chairman, this Mr. is Bill Yes, sir. Yes, I, um, I moved that the contract for athletic field renovations, Bunnell High School baseball field, and alternate to the original bid be awarded to Field Turf USA and the mayor be and is hereby authorized to enter into a contract for such in form satisfactory to the town attorney. Thank you. Wait a second to this motion. Laura Dantro, I'll second. 
second by Dave Harden. Uh, Mr. Mr. Harden, I got you there. I'm sorry. There were two people at the same time. Sorry. Mr. Harden has a second. Um, any discussion on this item? Mr. Chairman, Bill O'Brien again. Mr. O'Brien, go ahead, sir. Um, as some of you know, Ken Poison and I attend a, a meeting every Thursday morning at the job site and go over the progress. And um, I believe, Ken, can you confirm with me that we're actually going to save half a million dollars? The mayor had mentioned 100000 but they I believe they told us we would save half a million in addition to the fact that there's potential damage to the field if we waited a year to do the lights. Yeah, the, the number was uh, hovering around $200,000 or maybe a little more if we had put the lights off till next year, just with escalation and they would have to rent uh, a much bigger crane and we wouldn't want them driving on the turf, the brand new turf uh, and risking damage to it. So doing it this way was uh, a much better move. A, it gets the project done uh, and B, it's done cheaper, which is very important. Thank you, Ken. Thank and the you, other, yeah, the other important point about this project is that this field is used more by youth and adults than it is used by the high schools, and that will be even more the case when this becomes an all-purpose field that will also be used for soccer, lacrosse, and softball rather than just baseball. Thank, thank you. Mr. And to that point, I'll just add. I mean, to your point, Bill, and no one, no one knows soccer and youth sports better than than you in this town. Um, to having more field availability for for the kids to be able to schedule games and have more games, especially with the growth in lacrosse and, and other additional sports and soccer, I think it's just an value added. Um, and it's great that now that Benell and Stratford High both have 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 pristine fields with lights and the entire town. So thanks to everybody for your hard work on this. Any other discussion on the item? Nope. Okay. Uh, we'll call for a vote for approval on 7.1. Everyone, favor, please take the same time. Aye. Chair votes aye. Any opposed? Opposed, motion passes 10 0. Uh, next item on the agenda is item 7.2. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for approval. 7.2, Mr. Chair, if I may. Motion by Mr. Hardin to approve item 7.2. Do I have a second to that? Second by, Mr. second by Mr. Perillo. I got his hand. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> okay. Um, item 7.2, this was included in everyone's town packet. This came from planning uh, and was referred to us with a favorable recommendation. Uh, any discussion on this item? Uh, Chris, it's Greg Can. Go ahead, Greg. Looking at the map that was attached to the meeting minutes from planning, yeah. which, where is the uh, location of this uh, donation? Mr. Uh, LaFleurk or LeClaire, are you? I know um, Town Attorney Jackson worked on this or had, had advised on this. Yeah, I do not know make, where. I don't. I do not have an answer to that question. Uh, Greg, it, okay. Greg, what I know, I spoke with. Don't need Mr. Chairman. No, okay. Thank you, John. Greg, what I did, I spoke with Town Attorney Jackson did last week, and it was a very. I'm looking at the map right now. It's the sliver of the end of the dead end at the cul-de-sac. Um, and uh, to your point, to your point, well made on the on the map, it is a little confusing. Um, Mr. Poisson, did you have any knowledge on the spot? Yeah, it's um, it's the spot that's highlighted at the end of the road there, like you just said, at the end of Lincrest Drive. Uh, it's I gotcha. like a little, the little rectangular area there, Greg. Do you see it? It's kind of highlighted with the arrow going to it. It's at the very end of the current end of Lincrest Drive. Yeah, it's where the driveways start. Yes. Um. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yep. Any other questions? Any other discussion? I should say on this item. Okay. Um. Seeing none, we'll call for a vote. Uh, everyone in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Your votes aye. aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 10-0. Last item on the agenda, item 7.3, uh, TA contract with Supervisors Union. I'd like to make a motion to accept the uh, contract agreement. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Uh, do I have a second to that? Second by Dave Harden. 
Seconded by Councillor Hardin. Uh, any discussion? Uh, this count, the, this excuse me, this TA was included in the pony um, for council eyes only at this moment. Uh, hopefully, everyone had to take a had, had a chance to take a look at it. I thought it was a, a well negotiated contract on both sides. Um, if there's any discussion on this, okay. Uh, Greg can I'll just make a point that we used to carry ba large balance. We used to carry large balance for future settlements, meaning contracts that were delayed in getting signed. So it's good that we're uh, bringing timely closure to our contracts for financial reasons, but probably for morale also. I agree. Thank you, Greg, and and, and thank you to uh, Mayor Hordick and the administration on, on the negotiation, as well as the supervisors union for, for working well together. So I want to thank them as well. Um, with that, I'll call this for a vote. Uh, everyone in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Motion passes 10 0. Uh, last item on the agenda, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, wait, Council Chair. Yep, Madam, Madam Mayor, go ahead. So, in, in regards to the last item that you just passed, I think it should be recognized that the um, supervisors union gave up six months of salary increases for this contract uh, and because they knew that the town was in difficult position with the COVID pandemic that we had deferred taxes for 90 days and uh, I'd like to commend them for their resiliency in helping us stay afloat um, to help with their jobs as well but also for the town in general so um, I, th I think they're their leadership at this point. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Point well made. I know you're turning it on. Um, so with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Greg can. Motion by Greg. Bill O'Brien seconds. Seconded by Bill O'Brien. Everyone all in favor? Aye. Aye. Their votes aye. Thank you, everyone. Aye. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair.